Good evening, everyone. My name is Irene Jalim. I am the Manager of Regulatory Affairs of Tiliki and Gibbons in Indonesia. And I will be presenting on the cosmetic regulations in Indonesia, specifically how to export cosmetics into Indonesia. First, I would like to briefly introduce uh, Tiliki and Gibbons. We are a regional law firm in Southeast Asia. We have seven offices in six countries. Our headquarter office is in Bangkok, Thailand. And this webinar is actually a sequel to the previous uh, webinar uh, held last, last month for the cosmetics registrations um, in Thailand. And it was presented by our Tilligan Gibbons Director of Regulatory Affairs, Dr. Atha Chai Hamhuan. The outline of this uh, presentation will be first an overview of the cosmetic regulations in Indonesia. The second, uh, labeling claims and advertising, and also about trademark provisions for cosmetic products. These are the list of regulations that will be discussed in the presentation. The regulatory framework for cosmetics notification, uh, technical requirements for cosmetics ingredients, for labeling, as well as uh, claims and advertisement. I would like to also point out that there are two draft regulations currently still pending for cosmetic claims and advertisements. Definitions according to the regulation. Cosmetic is defined as an ingredient or product intended for use on the external human body, such as epidermis, hair, nail, lip, and external genital organ, or teeth and oral mucosa, mainly to clean, perfume, change the appearance, and or deodorize or protect or maintain a good condition of the body. Cosmetic notification is the marketing authorization required for distributing cosmetic products in Indonesia through online registration with BPOM. Local cosmetic is defined as cosmetic that is produced and packaged by a cosmetic industry in Indonesia or cosmetic that is produced overseas but packaged for primary packaging by a cosmetic industry in Indonesia. And imported cosmetic is defined as cosmetic that is produced by a cosmetic industry overseas, at least in the primary packaging, which is the packaging that is directly in contact with cosmetics. A cosmetic notification applicant is either a cosmetic industry in Indonesia, an individual business or business entity in Indonesia that entered a contract with a cosmetic industry for production of cosmetic products, an importer for cosmetic products. It should be noted that one cosmetic name can only be applied for notification by one notification applicant. An exception is for sister companies may apply for notification for the same cosmetic name. Cosmetic notification is valid for three years and it is renewable. This is the procedures for obtaining a cosmetic notification. It should be filed online through the BPOM website. And this is the uh, address for the website. First, you have to uh, file a company registration and it's also online. It takes approximately 14 working days. And after you obtain an online account, you can file for a cosmetic notification after you file the cosmetic notification template online, you pay the official fee and you have about seven working days um, to pay the official fee. And you'll receive an issuance of notification after BPOM has evaluate your application. According to the regulation, it takes 14 working days after payment, but in practice, it would usually take longer, maybe one to two months. Registration requirements. First is the business identification number. And then you also need a statement signed by the director and or head of the company stating that the company must not be involved in criminal acts in the cosmetics field. Identification card of the director or the head of the company. A recommendation letter as 
a cosmetic notification applicant from the head of UPT BPOM. And it should be noted that UPT BPOM is an independent task force unit responsible for certain operational technical duties. Guidelines on obtaining a recommendation letter is uh, stipulated by a separate um, regulation. It's in this regulation, which uh, we will not discuss uh, into details in this presentation, but uh, I, I mentioned it here as, um, as a reference. And then you also need a business license, a tax ID number, a letter of appointment, which should be valid at least six months, a GMP certificate should also be valid at least um, six months. And the validity period for the GMP certificate, if it is not indicated on the certificate, it would be considered as five years. Also, if the validity is more than five years, BPOM would also consider it as five years only. And then you'll need a certificate of free sale only for imported products from non-ASEAN countries. This is an official leaflet of um, cosmetic notification procedure and requirements actually um, published by BPOM. It is actually bilingual, so it, it would be um, uh, useful for uh, both local and uh, foreign um, companies. And I, I posted in this uh, presentation so that when you obtain the presentation materials, after the webinar, I think you will find it useful. It will also has the official fee for filing a cosmetic um, notification. Again, this is bilingual, so I think it, it should be uh, well understood. According to the regulation, there are 20 product types of cosmetics. Uh, creams, emulsions, lotions, gels, and oils for skins, face mask, tinted base, makeup powders, after bath powders, hygienic powders, toilet soaps, deodorant soaps, perfumes, toilet waters, and eau de cologne, bath and shower preparations, depilatories, deodorants and antiperspirants, hair care products, shaving products, products for making up and removing makeup from the face and the eyes, products intended for application to the lips, products for care of the teeth and the mouth, products for nail care and makeup, products for external intimate hygiene, sun bathing products, products for tanning without sun, skin whitening products, and anti-wrinkle products. I'm showing here uh, just a simple comparison table because this is, uh, again, this is a sequel of the webinar that was held last month for uh, cosmetic registration in Thailand. So Dr. Atachai mentioned that tampon and hand sanitizers are categorized as cosmetics in Thailand. But in Indonesia, tampon is categorized as a medical device and hand sanitizer is a household health product. Both medical device and household health products are governed under the Ministry of Health. We're moving on to cosmetics labeling. Requirements on cosmetics labeling are currently regulated in BPOM regulation number 30 of 2020 for the technical requirements for cosmetic labeling. The required information on a cosmetic label First is the name of the cosmetics. The name of the cosmetics is defined as the trade name and then the product type and the variant. It goes in this particular order. Benefits or functions. The exception is for products of which benefits and functions are obvious. Then you don't have to mention it on the label. Directions for use. Uh, again, the exception is for products of which directions for use are obvious. The composition, country of manufacture, the name and address of cosmetics notification owner, batch number, uh, net size, volume or weight, expiration date, notification number, 2D barcode. And this 2D barcode, what is referred here is the barcode issued by BPOM. And also warning and or caution. This is a sample of a cosmetic product and I'm going to point out um, the, infor the relevant information uh, that's required by BPOM on this um, particular product. Uh, on the left part, 
is the claims. No added alcohol, hypoallergenic, clinically tested, 97% ingredients of natural origin. And also the benefit is to moisturize and soften the baby's skin, directions for use, and the barcode. Uh, if you see here, I would like to also point out that there is an indication of the BPOM barcode. It says BPOM RI, and that's the way to distinguish the BPOM barcode and another barcode that the manufacturer might probably have on the product. And then the cosmetics name is Mustela Hydra Bebe Body, Body Lotion. The BPOM notification number is a little bit small. Uh, I marked it in the uh, yellow uh, circle. Importer's name and address is below the notification number. And then the country of manufacture is at the bottom. The composition is at the side of the uh, bottle, but uh, it's not shown in this uh, particular picture. And also batch number and expiration date are at the, the bottom of the bottle. It, they're also not shown here, but they are, they are um, on, the, on the packaging. And this is what the BPOM 2D barcode uh, would appear when you scan it through the BPOM mobile application. So anyone who purchased the product, they will be able to see the product information. It contains the um, notification number and they can see if it matches with the one that is shown on the product label, the name of the product, the trademark, the type of packaging, um, the form of the product. In this case, it's a viscous liquid, the name of the um, uh, importer, and also the manufacturer information. Some requirements on labeling. These three um, items must be in, in Bahasa Indonesia, the benefits or functions, the directions for use, warning, and or caution. The letters in parentheses refer to the previous slides where I list all the uh, requirements for labeling. So um, benefits or function is item B in the list, uh, directions for use item C, and warning and or caution is um, item L in the previous list of uh, required information on labeling. Now, the remaining required labeling information may be in Bahasa Indonesia or other foreign language as long as they are written in Latin letters and or Arabic numerals. The other non-required information may also be in foreign language other than Latin letters and or Arabic numerals. For primary packaging, if the product comes with secondary packaging or if the size of primary packaging is limited, then the minimum required information on the primary packaging is the name of the cosmetics, batch number, the net size, volume, or weight. The remaining required labeling information must be displayed on hanging tag, brochure, display panel, shrink wrap, or other labeling media. For composition, it must be declared in accordance to the formula as declared on the notification template. Use name of cosmetics ingredient to the name in accordance to international nomenclature of cosmetics ingredients. Uses genus and species name for cosmetics ingredients sourced from plants or plant extracts. Order from the largest to smallest content in percentage, except for ingredients with less than 1% content and or colorings may be declared in no particular order. For cosmetic claims, they are currently regulated in BPOM regulations number 19 of 2015, and also in regulations number one and eight of 2016 on cosmetics advertisement. Uh, it should be noted that these regulations do not um, provide examples of allowed claims. They do show examples of prohibited claims, but not claims that have been allowed. There are draft regulation on cosmetics claims. So in the draft regulation that's still pending, it provides the positive and negative list of claims. And these are non-exhaustive lists. So these are just examples. They are non-exhaustive. 
So uh, in the near future, there will be separate regulations on claims and advertisements. The cosmetics claims, the general rule, it should not be intended to treat or prevent a disease. Main functions based on definition of cosmetics is to clean, perfume, change the appearance and or deodorize or protect or maintain a good condition of the body. And it does not indicate a permanent effect. It should be a non-permanent effect. So in order to maintain the effect, some cosmetics need to be applied regularly. These are examples of the uh, claims that have been allowed for cosmetics. Rejuvenate skin, reduce foot odor, brightening skin, cleans teeth and mouth, smoothen wrinkles, revitalize hair, fight bacteria, soften baby skin, perfumes body. And then we have examples of the prohibited claims. Reduce body weight, make skin appear younger, prevent and eliminate wrinkles, whitening face, do not cause skin allergy and irritation, kills bacteria or virus or fungus or germs, uh, treat diaper rash, reduce stress, free of blackheads. And here I'm showing a little comparison table um, between the allowed claims and the prohibited claims. They might look similar, but the choice of words, it would make a difference whether your claim will be allowed or it will be prohibited. So fights bacteria is allowed, but kills bacteria is not. Brightened skin is allowed, whitened skin is prohibited. Reduces pore size is allowed, poreless is not allowed. Reduces itchy rash from prickly heat is allowed. Relieves irritation or redness from prickly heat is not allowed. Smoothen wrinkles is allowed. Prevents and eliminates wrinkles is not allowed. More requirements on cosmetic claims. It may not exploit the word halal as the main message. It should only be declared as information or fact. May not state, do not contain a prohibited ingredient. And some prohibited words to use in a claim is to treat or cure in relation to an illness. Uh, it is also prohibited to state safe, harmless, no side effects, potent or equivalent terms. Uh, superlative terms, the most number one top uh, may not be related to the benefits of the products. For cosmetic advertisements, they are currently regulated in BPOM regulation number one and 18 of 2016. Uh, cosmetics can only be advertised after receiving marketing authorization in the form of notification from BPOM. Cosmetics advertisements are not required to obtain prior, prior approval from BPOM. Advertisements must be in Bahasa Indonesia. Advertisements must be objective and not misleading. Other words, terms, or slogans in foreign language are allowed as long as understood by the target audience. A cosmetic advertisement must comply with public norms and order, may not use national flag symbol and or anthem, may not condescend a national hero or national monument, may not show any form of discrimination against ethnicity, nationality, religion, gender, age, disability, profession, disease, or sexual orientation, may not condescend other company or product, may not exploit sexuality or erotism, may not contain any implication that supports, justifies, or allows any violent act, may not exploit public misfortune, suffering, and or worries, may not induce or play fear or take advantage or of people's belief in superstition. So this is a comparison of the current regulation and the draft regulation of cosmetic advertisement. The main difference is that the draft regulation would specifically uh, indicate digital media, such as e-commerce, social media, uh, search entertainment, publisher, games, on-demand transportation. Uh, it can also be in the form of video, running text, and email. And this is all done to keep up with the current um, situation, obviously. Also, face-to-face -face communication, for example, through the sales promotion per, uh, person. 
and uh, with the draft regulation of cosmetics advertisement, it will exclude the provisions on claims because claims will be having its own uh, standalone regulation. And just uh, briefly on halal certification requirement for cosmetics, um, the products that were not halal certified by October 17, 2019 may still be imported, distributed, and sold in Indonesia in accordance to the halal certification uh, phasing period or stage-wise timeline based on the type of product as stipulated in the regulation of Minister of Religious Affairs, number 26 of 2019. And based on the ministerial regulation, the deadline for cosmetics to be halal certified is October 17, 2026. And non-halal certified products are considered to be non-halal. Uh, currently, there are no particular uh, requirements on the non-halal um, declaration, whether there's going to be a logo um, to be stated on the label, but we're going to continue to monitor the development of, of this regulation. Uh, it might uh, come out uh, closer to the deadline. So, um, but we'll continue to monitor the development of the halal um, regulations. Regarding trade name for cosmetics, a trademark certificate is generally not required for product registration. Healthcare authorities generally require that a trade name is not the same as a registered trademark owner, as a registered trademark owned by another person or entity. And for application of cosmetics notification, an applicant must submit a signed statement that states that in the event that there is found another party that is deemed to be more entitled to use the trademark and or cosmetics name, the applicant will consent to a cancellation of the notification. And this is just an example of a registered cosmetic uh, products. The name is Beauties. And the trademark application status is actually in provisional refusal. So I'm sh just showing that um, even though the trademark application may not be approved or it's uh, not registered, but uh, BPOM can still approve the name of the product for the cosmetics no notification. And that would uh, conclude my presentation. So I will look over the list of questions. Okay, the first one, the first one, does the certificate of free sale and GMP certificate require legalization? Also, do these certificates have to be issued by a certain agency or can any association or government agency uh, issue these documents? Uh, I believe there is a legalization requirements on both the free sale certificate and GMP and the certificates also have to be issued by um, government agencies, but um, to be sure, I will give a more detailed answer or response with a follow-up email, but they are definitely regulated in the regulation. So I will provide more uh, response uh, through email on that. Okay. The next one. Uh, is there an expiration to the cosmetic submission? Does it need to be renewed? Uh, the cosmetic notification is valid for three years and it is uh, renewable. Okay. Uh, should the composition follow the INCI nomenclature? Yes, it should follow the INCI nomenclature. Uh, does the sunscreen still under a cosmetic category and should product information file need to be submitted with the 
uh, notification application. Um, the sunscreen, I think it's still under cosmetic category. I'll check again on the list of uh, cosmetic categories, but as for the product information file, it doesn't have to be submitted with the notification application. You should keep it um, and maintain it uh, in the case that there is uh, an audit by the authorities. The next one, can non-halal products still be on the in Indonesian market? Um, as of now, yes, they can, because the final deadline is not until October 17 of 2026. Um, after that, the, if you still don't obtain a halal um, certification, then your products will be declared as non-halal. The next one, does BPOM notification number is compulsory to put on the label? And what is the requirements for a sunscreen product to be marketed in Indonesia? Should the applicant include SPF test result during notification application? Um, okay, I'll answer partly here and um, some with follow-up email. The BPOM notification number is compulsory to put on the label. And as far as, of, uh, as the particular requirements for sunscreen products, that part I will answer by a follow-up email. Uh, the next one is the applicant has to be Indonesian. Yes, the applicant has to be Indonesian. There are three categories of um, applicant, but they have, uh, they have to be an Indonesian. Uh, the next one is also related uh, to halal. Do all products sold in Indonesia need to be halal certified by 2026 for cosmetics? Yes, or can non-halal products still be sold? Yes, they can still be sold, but they will have to comply with the non-halal declarations, which uh, right now we don't have um, the information yet, but uh, like I mentioned previously, we're going to continue the development of the halal regulations. So we will find out later about the requirements for the non-halal declarations on the products. The next one, is there anything to consider when switching from local manufacturing to importation from an EU country? Okay, on this one, I would like to follow up by email. I will uh, need to uh, obtain more information uh, specifically uh, on this matter, and I will answer by follow-up email. Is the overlabeling authorized for the notification number and other information required in Indonesia? I think Mustela used an over, uh, overlabel, right? That's correct. Uh, Mustela uses an overlabel, and it is allowed to overlabel a cosmetic product. So you only uh, just it's by way of stickering, by the way. And so the sticker, it only contains the relevant information for the Indonesian label. Okay, the next one, one of the prohibited claims showed was uh, looking younger. I thought an appearance claim was allowable. Uh, what is the distinction for appearance claim? Okay. Um, right now, I think I will need uh, more time also to analyze about this particular claim. Um, it was just, uh, I was running through the list of claims as listed on the, on the uh, regulation. But to be able to analyze about uh, particular claims, then I will respond by follow-up email. Okay, the next one, does not making claim regarding hmm, preventing irritation from prickly heat also apply to a product itself, not causing irritation. For example, day cream or bath product is formulated not to irritate sensitive skin if you have appropriate um, substantiation. Um, I think it's also a matter of um, choice of words. So um, I will look uh, more into this particular claim also, and I will respond by email.
The next one, can the current halal certifiers be used to certify new products as halal? Um, right now, uh, the current regulation requires the new body, it's called the BPJPH, which is uh, under the Ministry of Religious Affairs to be the authorities uh, who handle the halal um, certification. But also the current halal certifiers, you must be referring uh, to MUI. They are also still involved in the halal certification, but um, there is a change of flow and procedures, definitely. Okay, I think that's all the list of questions. 